Hello everybody, welcome back. Episode 8 of the Stony Road Vice Critic Club podcast. So we had two male Scottish internationals last week, so we've got two female Scottish internationals this week. Uh, Fiona Penny, better known probably to the to the cricketing world as Fiona Urquhart, and Ilsa Lister. How are we doing guys? Start off Fee, how, how, how's lockdown in Australia been? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. We, we're not quite as, uh, it's not been as strict as you guys. There's still been cafes and things open, so... Um, and we, you know, we're in winter, but the weather's still lovely, so you can get out and about. Um, so yeah, every, everything's opening back up now, so sense of normality again. And you've got about hundred people allowed to things now, aren't you? So you're getting proper, proper back to normal. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, pubs are open, and um, yeah, you can sort of, I think, twenty people now you can meet with, and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah. yeah, getting there. It's been a bit strange, but um, yeah, for there. everyone. And also, I can imagine um, living with Stuart at the best of times is probably a bit rough. But, um, <laughs> um, during during yeah. lockdown, must have been a challenge. <laughs> yeah, there's been uh, quite a lot of cricket in the garden, as you can imagine. Yeah. Uh, we got a puppy just before lockdown, so he's been keeping us busy as well. Feel that? Uh, yeah. But I think Stuart's more work than the puppy is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. So uh, today we're just going to do a bit of a, you know, get to know these two, how they got into cricket, um, and then a bit about just what they've done in the game. And obviously, Elsa, what you're going to do after, and obviously Fee, if you're find out if you're still in cricket and what are your plans for the future as well. So first of all, Elsa, how did you get into cricket? Um, um, so I just got into cricket through Stuart. So I think Stuart started very young, you know, like, P1, mm-hmm. I think he was going to the sessions at Huntley. And then I think just having that older brother, I was like, oh, I'll give it a go. Um, so I started when I was in primary four um, mm-hmm. and just going to the sessions at Huntley. Because Huntley's very cricket oriented, isn't it? So I mean, yeah, it's, it's especially that. the juniors, definitely. So was that Neil Nicol back then as well, or was it someone else? Yeah, it was. It was, it was Neil. So he started at the club and then. Um, I was already at club, but then he came to the primary and stuff. So a few more of my friends joined and that kind of thing. That's good as well, playing with your friends as well. So And from that, you just caught the bug and kept playing? Yeah, I kept playing. I did quite a few other things, um, but then over the years, just kind of whittled it down to focus on cricket. Yeah. So, uh, and Fee, how did, how did you get into it then? Um, so Noxie and, and Grant came round the schools um, and did the like taster sessions and then if you were good enough you got picked for um, a team to go into the like inter-schools comp so I played for Dice Dynamos which was quite the Dice team. Um, nice. Played. Uh, I could be a T20 like, franchise nowadays. Yeah definitely yeah. <laughs> um, so played against like Stonywood Primary, Bucksburn, New Hills um, at the old BPXL club, uh, which is now no more. Um, and we won. I think I was primary six and we won that year, which was awesome. Mm-hmm. My brother, David, he'd started playing the year before. So he'd been already going up to the, the junior practice. Um, and then me being the annoying little sister, competitive, wanted to go along as well. <laughs> um, much to his you know, disgust, but no, he was fine. Um, so yeah, tagged along with him and, and just started up to junior training and, and it went from there. So, so similar stories then, two older brothers and yep. uh, living in the shadow of their, their younger sister, I think. Um, <laughs> they wouldn't like to hear that. Um, so any junior cricket memories of um, games, Elsa? Can you remember any um, first games you would have played? I remember doing a lot of like quick cricket. Like I remember there was like Friday nights and um, there was like Falkabers and Elgin. Um, and and it was mixed and like we would just go to different places and it would play like a little round robin. Um, each week and then I also remember running fine leg to fine leg in an under 13s hardball match which Stuart was playing in and it just so happened that I was there watching and it was at Manafield um, and they were like oh Elsa you could just you could just play um, so I just remember running fine leg to fine leg and um, so that yeah. wasn't as good as it is now but <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, Fee? Yeah junior cricket just Oh, just being the only girl um, but that wasn't the you know I played football and was the only girl um, vivid memories of, of the rivalry with Aberdeenshire that was yeah that definitely springs to mind I mean we played you know Stonehaven and Baruri Bankery but the, the game against Shire was always always, always the big yeah. one um, I think a little bit we always felt that they kind of looked, looked down their noses at us you know a lot of them were private school boys and all that kind of stuff and they'd rock up in mm. people's park and just kind of yeah um, but you know th- there was nothing in it um, uh, but to, to play them and, and to beat them was always always the big the big thing that you want to do. So, I've yeah. actually got a, a picture I'll share my screen with you see if this brings back some memories for you. 
Can you see that one? Oh my god. Was that a uh, under 13 cup run, was it? Because that is some team when you look at the names there. Yeah. I think eight um, of them played some sort of Scotland level. Yes. Uh, yeah. Can you remember anything about that? Was that an under 13 cup, Scottish cup run? Uh, it was, it might have been under 15s, I think. I think yeah. I was like maybe the sort of lower bracket of under 13s, and then like so Kyle and Brando and that were maybe 15. But I'm not sure, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but I do remember that we uh, had a good cup run and then went down to, um, I think it was New Annie's Land in Glasgow and beat, um, I'm pretty sure it was Clydesdale in the final. Um, and they were they were star studded as well. They had a, quite a few of the Scotland boys playing as well. Um, but yeah, I do, I've got fond memories of that. Yeah. Fan and sunglasses in that picture. I know, the, the Stevie Wonder <laughs> lookalikes at the light of Mark Marty Reed. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I just noticed this picture. Three, three Kutzers, but not the not the conventional three Kutzers, that's for sure. Yeah, Cameron and, uh, Cameron and, Ashley. and AJ in there, yeah, Ashley. Yeah. yeah, I just thought it was good to uh, find that on the family, it's quite good to share. Yeah, so, um, wow. anyone, anyone that you looked up to at Stony Wood for you, growing up? Um... Oh, well, I think I think like the that picture there, like um, as a, as a young junior, we had we had so many um, young Scotland internationals in in the side, uh, mm -hmm. and they they were like a class above. You know, they were they were seriously good cricketers, and you, you could tell why they were in amongst all the youth stuff. Um, so I think yeah, I mean, because that was obviously the, the the first people we were exposed to um, was obviously the older juniors. Um, so definitely like you know playing with Kyle and Brando and. Um, Michael Campbell was in there. That's a blast from the past. And um, yeah, I think I think those boys certainly was the um, sort of the first people we looked up to. Um, and then yeah, like you know, I think Gordon mentioned it last week. It's really hard to pick out because we've we've got so many like local legends, so many good overseas players. Um, mm. And then like senior cricket for me, starting off playing with with the old boys um, like AB. Yeah. Kevin Maver played a few games with Bob Lamb Senior, I think, back in the day. Um, that is one person that I would absolutely love to play a game of cricket with, honestly. Yeah, I think the very, <laughs> very tail end of his playing career, um, I was probably yeah doing the fine leg to fine leg and, and <laughs> some of the standing slips. Um, but you know, getting to play with those guys, and they were, you know, even at the back end of their career, still serious cricketers, um, still had that fire, still had that um, competitiveness, um, and, mm -hmm. and definitely learned a lot from them. Yeah. And then yeah, like the the overseas guys, um, and yeah, like local local legends. Um, I'm not going to rattle names in case I forget someone, but yeah, you know, yeah. blessed with a lot of a lot of role models and a lot of people to 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 bounce off at the club, which has been great. Yeah, and then Ailsa, obviously you've maybe a bit different because you've got a lot of women's cricketers are supposed to go ahead. I mean, especially stuff like Kirsty Gordon. So is that someone that you probably looked? Yeah. Looked so uh, Kirsty was probably like the first female to come out of Huntley um, so she was probably about my age when I was younger and playing quick cricket so I remember she would kind of come along and help coach um, so that was good and like then we saw you know like Scott like Kirsty Scotland player um, and I think that was kind of the starting point to get lots of other girls in because now there's lots of girls my age and a little bit older Mm -hmm. um, that I played with like quick cricket um, that all kind of looked up to Kirsty. So Kirsty was definitely the starting point of the female cricketers to come out of Huntley yeah. and there still is uh, quite a lot of female cricketers I think um, there's still like they've got like girls only sessions and things and there's like 30 to 40 numbers yeah. um, so that's pretty good. Well yeah I mean I, I remember playing games against like under 17 Huntley teams girl, like, yeah. girls only when I was like under 15 and 30 and you know maybe you do rock up as a boy thinking what's going on you know what I mean what's going on here <laughs> and they actually give you a real run for money and you're like oh yeah fair, fair enough but um yeah so I mean that's good I mean as you say not no one better I mean she's played the Ashes series and World Cups and all that so yeah fantastic but um if you could give one tip to a young girl else up starting out cricket maybe like you in primary whatever she started at what would you what would you say um I would probably say to not be scared of the boys <laughs> Yeah. Um, especially at that age so there's not actually not that much difference between you know like physical abilities and that kind of thing so it would be definitely be a, a starting point and I think to just like stick at it and enjoy it um, and play lots of different sports as well I think that's definitely helped like mm -hmm. many like good sports people are like do multiple sports so that would yeah. be my tip <laughs> 
Fee, what about you? Words of wisdom, ex Scotland uh, captain. Yeah, for <laughs> me, um, just enjoy it. Um, you know, cricket takes up a fair bit of time, whether it's a game or our train sessions. Um, if you're not having fun, then um, you know you're probably not going to do very well. I played my best cricket when I just didn't think about it and and, and had lots of fun. Um, play to your strengths. Don't try and be a, a player that you're not. Um, and just keep it really simple. You know, batting's a fairly simple thing to do. Um, bowling, simple bowling plans. Um, and then probably the biggest thing is, is really work on your fielding. Um, it's the thing you'll do most in every single game. Um, and it can really change a game. Um, you know, you take a blinding catch to dismiss their gun um, or an amazing stop on the boundary to save two or three, and that might yeah. be the game. Um, so, yeah, just, just really work hard and, and, and enjoy fielding as well. I think that's a big thing. Yeah, definitely. Um, so get on to senior stuff. And obviously you touched on it very few, a bit earlier, but what were your first real senior memories or, like, first senior games you played in. As you say, I mean, as a young girl playing in a, in a man's team, I, mean, I, I am, at, as a boy at 11 years old, you feel a bit intimidated playing with adults. I can't imagine what it would be like for you guys. Yeah, just uh, yeah, started off in the grades. Um, and as, as far back as I remember, I was the only girl that I think, I, I don't think I ever played against another female um, within within the grade setup. Um, I hope I hope that's changed now. I hope there's more, more girls involved. Mm. Um, yeah, tough, tough challenge in the grades. It definitely tests you. It's a lot um, tougher than people say. I, I preach that. I preach that. Yeah, yeah. Um, nobody wanted to get out to me. I was, I was a bowler when I first started out. Um, none of the guys wanted to get out to me. Um, all of the guys wanted to get me out when I was batting. Um, so yeah, I had to had to prove them. They'd all crowd around the bat and then get a shock when I drill the cover drive into their shin or past them <laughs> to move back. Um, uh, yeah, and and you know after a few years they they you know they knew what it was all about and, and kind of I got that respect from them. I do remember one instance where one lovely chap had had been making comments all game about women sh- not playing cricket, um, which I'd kind of shrugged off. But AB uh, fiercely stood up for me and and gave this guy a, a bit of a spray. Um, and then he came out to bat and AB was bowling and and was still giving it to him. And eventually he uh, lost his composure and he spooned up to me at cover. So it was. Uh, Ah, lovely, lovely. Sweet that AB, AB bowled and I caught him out and he, he was sent packing. So, um, but there wasn't too much of that. Like I said, it was all, yeah. all, all the guys had a good bit of respect. And um, yeah, I love, love playing the grid, in the grid. Elsa, first senior memories or just playing? Um, well, I've only been playing, I think I only played two, two full seasons for Huntley before I came to Sunnywood mm-hmm. last season. Um, so not... Not too much to be honest, but um, yeah. I just remember that like there was a like because there's quite a good number of girls. I think there was maybe three of us that were playing. We were playing like Noska reserves, mm. um, so that was like even then was the first hint of the amount of travelling you do for cricket. You know, like travelling up to Fort William, especially <laughs> that Noska. That Noska is ridiculous, isn't it? Up yeah, to... like going up to Ross County and places yeah. like that. Um, but yeah, I, I just remember being quite thankful that. I had two other girls and we did get on with quite like there was quite a lot of juniors in that side you know there was only three or four senior men and um, because I think that was kind of the the place to grow like the youngsters and um, so I just remember being quite thankful that there was other people and it, it probably wasn't like Fee where she was like the only one like the only girl um, and it was quite good because I had we had quite a good relationship with the other boys. You know, some boys can be a bit like you know go away, um, <laughs> but so but definitely having a good relationship with them and just I think like Huntley were pretty welcoming. I think they kind of just accepted the fact that there was quite a few females coming through, yeah. and it just kind of became normal to have females unlike yeah. fee. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's what I was going to get onto how women's crickets like evolved and changed, and I mean. As yeah. you say, Fee, it's, and one thing I did want to mention, obviously, talking about your first team debut, Elsa. Well, you made a first team debut against Aberdeenshire in T20, but the mm-hmm. Eastern Premier League first team debut, the week before we played Catherine Bryce against for Watsonians, so they were making a massive deal. Oh, it's the first and only woman to ever play in Eastern Premier League. Next week, <laughs> Elsa is keeping for us, so can you talk us through the memories from that day? I think, your um, first, I think your first catch was um, the pro, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I remember it was a really easy catch. It was king or bowling. And I think, I, I, you know, I hate to say it, but I don't think it was actually that good a ball. No, uh, it wasn't. It was, it was, it was, it was a, a half tracker that classic Stony Wood stuck and hands yeah, in the air for a while. And it, like, 
and I think it took the pro by surprise and then it's one of those ones that just kind of lobbed up I absolutely hate those because <laughs> it's like you have so much time to think about it and I just remember having a sigh of relief once I had caught it I was like oh god like you're not gonna get much easier like first team catches on your debut <laughs> yeah. um, and then I remember taking two catches after that as well so that was that was pretty good and then obviously we won so that was good it was a, and as you, I mean, that's a, like a good point to make. I mean, two women played last year in the Eastern Premier League. It just shows how much cricket's going on. And neither, of, neither I played in both games, and neither of them looked out of place. You know, yourself or Catherine Bray, she played some, she played some cover drives that I could dream of playing. So, um, Fee, what were your first team members? I think you had a few, few T20s, did you? Yeah, not not a huge amount of first team action. Um, a couple of the midweek T20s, um, but probably. Was probably more just a, a fielder and uh, maybe set, you made quite an impact on the second team though wasn't it in the strap yeah I played more more second team um as, as a bowler to start off with and then the um last few years of my stony career was was more uh, batting open the batting um which yeah i love playing the twos it was always always a great great bunch of guys and you obviously get to go to some nice uh some nice grounds, always some good opposition to play against. Um, mm. And yeah, just, just a lot of fun. I, I, I always enjoy playing for the twos. And a 60 odd against Meagle, I think is the, do you remember yeah. that one? That must I be. think that might, might have been my, my, last, uh, my last game for Stoney. One of the last games for Stoney was, yeah. Yeah, um, um, they were unbeaten that year, I think. And I think I might have been the only person to score over 50 against them. Um, should have had a ton that day, I gave it away. I tried to. It's a tough place to bat as well, Nigel. So um, it might have been a yeah. time that day. Yeah, yeah. Threw it away. and that—that's that's a good one. Um, so a little little Stony would like Q and A to end that, and then we'll get on to the other stuff. So, Fee, one Stony would player that you you wanted to play with or would like to have played with but didn't get the chance to. Oh, yeah, I've racked my brains about this one. Um, and it's a it's a tricky one for a guy if people who have been for so long because you've played mm -hmm. with everyone. Yeah, yeah, and a little bit like Gouge last week. I, I, I can't, I can't actually think of anyone that I, you know, like I say, I even squeezed in a couple of games with, with Bob Lamb, Lamb Senior, um, and, and all the old boys, and then, uh, you know, coming through like you know, Gordon and Leeski were, were my age going through, um, mm -hmm. and then some younger guys that came through. So there's really, there's not really anyone, um, and obviously anyone, anyone that came after me, um, I, I'm not too sure, but um, very fortunate to play with. Um, uh, and an enormous amount of amazing cricketers. So, yeah, not got an answer for that one, I'm afraid. So, okay. Elsa, have you got an answer for that one? Um, probably like stand, up, stand up to fee, maybe. <laughs> so probably like the the normal ones, you know, like I think like Kyle and Gordon um, and Leesky. I think just well, especially now, you know, they were quite young, especially Kyle. I think he left when he was quite young, didn't he? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But now like being the players that they are now I think you can you could learn a lot from them um, and then also I did put a little note down of Noxie just because I think it would be quite amusing because obviously he's now my coach um, mm. so I know him pretty well and I just think it would be quite entertaining to <laughs> play with him at one point. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Um, Fee, any favourite overseas that you can pinpoint? I know, I know it's difficult to, to pick one, but I know you had a good yeah. um, Paddy. You mentioned, I think. Yeah, Amazing. absolutely. Paddy um, had a had a huge impact on my career. So I I was thirteen, going on fourteen. Paddy's year. Um, so he made a hell of an impact on my career. Just just around mindset. Um, you know, I, I kind of had the the skills, but maybe the mental side of the game. I you know I, I was a bit fiery and maybe things got the better of me and things like that but um and also I, I was an out and out bowler and then Paddy came across and I didn't really enjoy batting but Paddy changed my mindset I started off by I had to write I can bat a thousand times for one of the training sessions <laughs> I might, I might um, try it <laughs> yeah you write it you write it enough and you start to start to believe it um and then yeah just you know making it really simple the, the drills um you know the footwork drills um balance drills um to, yeah, red and yellow ball for attacking and defending shots just just really really simple um and then as, as guy said last week you know watching yourself back on film really makes a massive difference like you think your head's in a really good position and it's actually not um so that was amazing um and then his uh, his fielding sessions at training were just 
they were so intense like you sometimes you you know felt like you're going to throw up and you were exhausted at the end of it but training at that intensity when it came to a game it was just second nature and, and you just and you just did it and you know diving stops throwing off the ground taking amazing catches and mm-hmm. um yeah just just that sort of work ethic around how to train and then yeah mindset so so paddy without doubt had had the biggest impact on my career yeah i think he did say that he said we were the best field inside by an absolute mile in the league and as you said i said at the start it makes a massive difference um yeah. obviously it also maybe a bit, bit tougher for you but any any favorite overseas over the years obviously you've got huntley as well so maybe, maybe. yeah i think well i've only um i remember being really young and we had huntley had azar ali um mm-hmm. and i know like everybody learned quite a lot from him um but i think i was maybe just a little bit too young but too i do young, remember i do remember meeting him and then i've only really had and then Huntley didn't really have many after that. And then obviously just last year had Gareth and Liam. So I've not really had that much experience of the overseas. Oh, but I, I remember I remember when I was maybe P7, mm-hmm. um, we had Matt Day and Marlo Jardine. And he, Marlo was doing quite a lot of coaching and um, he definitely helped me a lot. And they ended up, like they were staying at flat, like just at the end of, our road and obviously Stuart being like cricket mad um, they were around quite a lot so I definitely learned quite a lot from them mm-hmm. um, as well as Stuart as well I suppose. <laughs> yes uh, yeah that's good and um, so last question on Stony Wood then favourite game theme you, uh, you'll have a, a lot to a lot to pick from. Jeez I can never I can't remember what I had for dinner last night let alone <laughs> games from like six seven years ago um, Oh geez, that's tough. That's tough. I think oh, yeah, again, it's a bit of a copper answer, but like the, the whole social side of things, Stonywood, like it mm. could it could be a, a dreadful game where you got thumped, but you still had an amazing day because of yeah. you know the social side of things and um, even training. It was like so inclusive. Um, you know whether you're first first team, second team, third team, like everyone was in and, and having a laugh and then have a beer afterwards. So. Um, yeah, again, it's a bit of a cop out. But Got any, any funny stories for the socials then, where you can substitute the question? Um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Just and like I said, I can never remember stats and stuff. So there's and um, I can never remember performances. So yeah, um, yeah just and like I said, at the start like um, junior cricket and then in senior cricket, any any game against Shire was always a, always a big one. So um, they they probably stand out. Um, and then obviously if you if you beat them, even better. Absolutely. Um, also, any yeah. favourite games over each played? Um, Once again, it's hard, isn't it? It's a hard question. Yeah, it's a hard one. Um, I I don't know actually. Um, I haven't really thought about it, but yeah. I just I really enjoyed playing like twos as well because um, I feel like it was kind of like I was definitely thrown in at the deep end, you know, like just came at, kind of at the start of the season, end of the winter, start of the season, and then just kind of thrown in so it was definitely you know I was like this young girl and def like as Fee says you know everybody's so friendly and they welcomed me in and obviously I had Michael Lowe which he's quite a character um <laughs> but he, you know he kind of he kind of helped me into Stonywood and obviously having lots of car journeys with him which is lots there's probably of no one better is there to yeah, make the um, ice and help you get into. Um, but I definitely enjoyed every every twos game. It was always always fun. Um, always felt included, and I just I just love keeping. I could I could keep for days, you know, and I could keep for days and not just not bother batting, you know. <laughs> batting batting's just so much effort, and keeping I just feel like it's just like What's muscle memory thing? now. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I don't really have any fix. Yeah, it's, it's a tricky one. I've asked a few people. I might bin off that one because everyone, Kyle, Kyle and Gary, just went. I've played about five hundred games of cricket. I have <laughs> no idea. Uh, anyway, so we'll move on a bit. Um, I'm just interested. I think it'd be quite interesting to talk about like how women's cricket's changed because obviously, um, Fee, as you say, when you started, um, what was like the Scotland stuff like? Or was there any? Was there even anything much going about in the junior side of things, or was it? Yeah, no. There was the the uh, the senior women's team. And mm-hmm. that was it. So if you were if you played and almost could hold a bat, then you were almost in the in the. So there wasn't even any under thirteens, fifteens, or anything. Nah, 
No, nah, there was uh, the senior stuff and then uh, there was some under 21s. Um, and then from there, it obviously progressed, I think, to like 15s, 17s. Um, but I, I played I played 21s and, and full stuff. But there, yeah, there wasn't any junior uh, junior stuff. Played junior boys. I played um, three games for the Scotland under 13 boys. I think I was the first girl to play. Um, maybe only, yeah. maybe still the first first girl to play in a boys uh, I would team, make so. a bit educated guess and say you're probably the only one yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so that was good to played um three internationals against Denmark which is uh, a random team to play against but um yeah that was good um but yeah women's stuff yeah back in the day like you know there wasn't a huge there wasn't there wasn't many women to pick from um and come together you know you're up and down the road to, to Edinburgh early mm-hmm. starts and all that and then um as it progressed obviously we got involved in the county stuff so that meant um trips to all over England, um, Devon being the furthest one, which from Aberdeen was, was uh, I think, 13 and a half hours. Um, and then, you know, obviously, it's um, all amateur, so you had, uh, you know, uh, not a huge amount of holidays, so I was often driving back and then getting in at 4 a.m. And, and going to work at half six the next morning, which, yeah. which probably wasn't very sensible. But, um, <laughs> no, it's come, it's come a long way. Um, I think the setup now, it's, you know, I mean, it's not professional in terms of being paid, but... You know, I know the girls get a lot of support, like S and C and and the mental side of things and things like that. So, um, it definitely makes a difference. Uh, my last tournament, um, in Sri Lanka in 2017, um, there was some teams like South Africa yeah. and Bangladesh who were fully pro. There was some teams that were like semi pro, and then um, you know, the amateur teams like ourselves, um, essentially amateur, um, and and you could see the difference. Like you really could see the difference in. Um, just the intensity of, of, of playing and things like that. So yeah. I hope down the line um, there is an option for, for the Scottish girls to, to have it as a career. Um, you know, it's still early days. We, we only, I think we played our first international in 2000. So it's only 20 years old um, and a bit to go. But yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear the news that even, even semi-pro contracts for the girls would be awesome. Can you remember much about your debut? Uh, or how, how it came about because I think uh, looking at the thing you were 12 or 13 yeah I played played a couple of county games when I was 12 um and then first ODI um I was th- maybe 13 and a half um and yeah I think the first it was the first game or if not the same tournament we played England um I think it was the only time we played full England actually and they racked up um 300 against us and we got pulled out for I think about 35 so <laughs> <laughs> probably I was zero not out though which uh, batting number number seven I was zero not out that tells yeah. you how it went <laughs> yeah. um you know so it's probably one of the worst games of cricket you could ever have but um that was down in I think Reading I think perhaps um but how yeah did it, how, how did it come about was it just uh was it, was it did you expect it or was it like wow I'm uh, playing we went down, I remember mum took me to, I think it was maybe Dollar, the school um, near Stirling, um, and they held like open trials. Um, and like mm-hmm. at that time, there, you know, there was maybe 20 girls in the country that was playing. So went down and, and had trials um, and it was Clarence Parfit, um, who, who's our bro, of, he, was, um, he was the coach at the time and he had a chat to mum and, you know, what availability I had and all that kind of stuff. And then, yeah, got a, got a phone call um, a week or so after that, you know, invite me down to, uh, like I said, I think it was a couple of county games. Um, and then, yeah, following year was obviously the training and a more structured um, fixture lift as well. Yeah. So, um, also obviously, so in a stark comparison, um, you've been Scotland women all throughout the age groups, is it? So what yeah, so uh, I started in under-17s. Um, and it's only this year that they were starting in under 15. So that's, again, progress. Um, but I think I was, I think this is my third year. This was, yeah, this was going to be my th- fourth year. So this was going to be my fourth year in under 17s this year. Um, and then I kind of progressed to under 21s, which was then, it's now kind of known as the Performance Academy. And then I played quite a few A games last mm-hmm. year, which is, all the like all all the counties um you know traveling by bus you know 12 hours or whatever it was um good fun isn't it (laughs) yeah (laughs) great fun Uh, (laughs) um so but i definitely think you know like looking back on like the bus journeys and everything like that it definitely like helped like the whole bonding and everything like that because if i hadn't i didn't know half these girls especially going into the a 
like the A team last year, um, but then spending spending twelve hours on a bus, you know, you've got you, you're going to get to know people, um, and then yes, yeah, so then I made my debut last year, so I've only played one game, and that was against England Academy which ended up getting rained off, so that was a bit annoying. Take um, it, take it. Uh, it'll be, there'll, be plenty, there'll be plenty more, I'm sure, but take it. Uh, I'm st- I'll still take it. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> but it was fine because actually we managed to get, um, managed to like book, so it was at Loughborough, so we managed to get the whole hall for like the whole day. Mm-hmm. Um, so we got quite a lot of coaching in and training, so that it wasn't all bad. Um, and then the England Academy girls were also there. Um, so we're kind of like splitting the hall. Um, so that was quite good. Uh, but it's definitely evolved. Obviously, they had the qualifiers last year um, in Scotland, but they obviously didn't qualify. But it was still really good because, you know, you had, we had a lot more support than mm-hmm. I, th- I, it, I definitely didn't expect as much support as there was. Um, but it was definitely good. And it was good that it was held in Scotland because then it kind of, you know, puts it on the map and people realise, oh, there is actually a Scotland team, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely, I remember that. And we weren't far away from qualifying, was it? it just if we could have beaten the Irish. So, yeah. Um, yeah. No, as you say, I mean, that's really good. Um, so I suppose the Scotland's have a see, Do you have a favourite game or any favourite, a favourite tournament or anything? Because I think you've played in a, I think I saw a ICC Council, Cricket Council game with Pakistan and everything or something. Yeah, yeah, I think... Um... The last tournament I played in, um, we probably didn't perform as well as we could, but um, the game against South Africa, like we had absolutely nothing to lose. Like, so these, these are full-time girls. Um, and they've got like uh, Danny Van Niekerk, Marazan Kapp, um, oh, the quick bowler, Ish- Ishmael, um, who bowls bloody quick. She got me on the toe and it, it hurt a little bit. <laughs> um, you know, we had nothing to lose. And we went out and, and we didn't win the game, but we, you know, we had some solid performances in there. Um, Carrie Carswell got a 50 against them and, um, we had them maybe five down, I think, which, you know, mm. nowhere near getting them out, but just to take five wickets against a team like that. Um, the qualifiers prior to that in, in Thailand, it was a T20 comp. Um, at that stage, I loved T20. So um, going in and, and having a, a hit, um, it was kind of my role to just try and get us off the flyer. Mm. Um, we just just missed out on qualification on that one as well. We came third in that tournament. Um so again, yeah, just so close, so close. Um, Slowly but surely getting it, isn't it? It's... Exactly that, exactly yeah. that. Um, uh, any other games that stand out? Um, I, I, yeah. I, I had a quick look on your um, cricket info. I, I couldn't find the scorecard, but a 97, I think, somewhere? 97 out? <laughs> yeah, 97 not out, yeah. Remember that one? Got to, Someone yeah. that fancy just maybe waiting three more runs for you? or. <laughs> yeah, we just yeah we 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 were batting second, so we we reached the total. Um, and someone was like, why why do you not hit a six off the last ball? And I was like, well, haven't hit a six all game, so <laughs> you know to try and do it. But yeah, I mean that was a, a, a yeah pretty good innings that one. I, I batted really well that day and um, had a lot of fun with that one. And um, I don't think I knew what I was on actually. Um, I think it was you know ground where you either can see that your score or the you know. Um, but to come off, you know, ninety seven not out, you'd, you'd, you'd take that. So closest yeah. I got. Yeah. Closest you got, yeah. And I know. Oh, the other person on the other end, you just told me, dot, <laughs> dot it up, dot it up. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, so um, where did, I've always wondered, Elsa, where did keeping come from? Was it just um, natural or did you just not fancy bowling? Well, actually, <laughs> um, it was in, it was again in quick cricket. And uh, I remember, like, it was, uh, we had like a girls' tournament. And quite a few girls' games, um, and everybody was the likes of uh, Laura Grant, you know, that age. So kind of that three years older than me. So I was, they were in P seven, I was in P four, and there was just me and then them. And then I think, you know, everybody was just like, oh, you, you know, you're the youngest, you can stand behind the stumps. So that's the boring job, you know. Um, so then I just ended up like standing, standing behind the stumps, and then obviously everybody gets bowled. So then I bowl my one over, and then get chucked back behind the stumps again and then it just kind of evolved into like hardball and then Callum Howard he was at our at our training um and he kind of kept up he did some keeping work with me um and I just I just loved it I just loved you know I remember like looking out to the 
boundary and there would be a girl like doing cartwheels in quick cricket on the boundary because she was bored you know or and then another girl like picking her nails or whatever it was and I just was always in the game I just loved that like uh just being a part of it all the time and not having any chance to just pick my nails or whatever it was <laughs> yeah absolutely keeps you in the game all the time um so I suppose we'll end with like a little a little like what, what's happening next so Elsa what's what's your career ambitions I suppose what is the what is the goal I mean I'm sure there'll be plenty more Scotland stuff but have you got ambitions to go down south or um I think like I just want to play like to the highest but level possible yeah um I there I think I'm probably going to go to uni down in Edinburgh um so that'll be quite handy for the whole Scotland stuff and that kind of thing um and just I think because I'm not I'm just in the like the training squad mostly for the for the Scotland women so probably just to become a like a permanent you know have us have a solid spot in the in the 12 or 13 or whatever it is mm-hmm. um and just probably just keep playing and get to the highest level I can and see what happens absolutely yeah yeah and then and then Fee obviously you retired a few years ago was it yeah that, that, um, just because yeah. the commute the commute from Australia was a bit more than from a uh, from Aberdeen to Edinburgh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah a couple of things that like um the the last tournament um I you know we, we played well but I, I did notice a, a massive gap between the teams that were qualifying and 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 some other teams as well so certainly you know I felt in the next couple of years, which is all I had probably left in me, um, I, I didn't see us qualifying for a World Cup, which was 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 a big driver for me. Um, and yeah, the the long distance thing, you know, being part of a squad um, when you're only meeting up with the squad at the tournament was was quite tough as well. So that had a um, a bit to do with my decision as well. So um, and then I played. Um, I was still playing cr- club cricket. Um, yeah, so it was. Played two more games um, after I retired, and then called that called a day on that as well. Um, wanted to do other stuff on my weekend, um, like surfing and skateboarding and all the crazy things you do when you turn 30 over in Australia. <laughs> so I was going to say, when, when did you move over to Australia? It was five years ago now, is it? Uh, six and a half, yeah. So uh, after the 2013 season, um, headed over for supposed to be six months. Um, yeah, mum mum still says that's a long six months. Um, <laughs> so played played one season, came back to Scotland for a season, and then um, 2014 came out um came out sort of full, full time permanently I guess um yeah so and been, stayed in cricket did you stay in cricket over there and then yeah so played uh five five seasons um grade first grade cricket out here um which is which is awesome um mm. a lot of uh, well some international girls play some the state team a lot of the girls play in that comp as well um so really good standard um yeah finished up with that a couple of years ago um but I work in cricket so I work for Cricket New South Wales um we also for the Sixers, and that's why I'm in this gear. Um, so I am an area manager in community cricket. Um, so we deal with everything um, in the Sydney North region from entry level programs, just like I think you guys call it All Stars, it's similar to that. Yeah. yeah. Um, all in the schools, uh, club cricket, junior, female cricket, all abilities cricket, a um, lot to do with the, the council, with um, putting facilities in, uh, and uh, yeah, aligned with the BBL. So we get to do some match activation stuff as well, which is, which is pretty cool. That is, that's cool. So still in cricket and a stark contrast to what it's like in Scotland, I'm sure. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, still love cricket. So the chance to work it, work in it, and um, uh, and and yeah, community cricket. You know, you're you're working with all the youngsters, and especially the girls' cricket over here. You know, they've got a a, a pathway for girls right through from the, mm-hmm. the minute they pick up a bat right through. You know, little girls over here can say, "I want to be a, a cricket player as a as a job, whether it's a state level or or." higher honours at international uh which is which is incredible it's really good to see yeah no that's all good so i mean i think we'll, we'll end with a quick a quick q a about places you've played and all that so um first of all your favorite ground you've played at um so i think favorite scottish ground is probably either gordonston or um or broth mm-hmm. um, and then we also played well last year when we went to ireland i played at um it was called Rush Cricket Club and that was in Dublin and that was Owen Morgan's home ground, like where he grew up. He grew up. Um, so that one was for like the occasion. It was like a couple of weeks after they'd won the World Cup. Um, so that was that was quite cool, like the experience to play there and they still had the banners and everything up. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Fee? Um, yeah, some, some nice grounds over here in Sydney, some, some sort of first class grounds that you play 
club cricket on, which is pretty cool. Um, one qualifying tournament we played in South Africa uh, in a, a region called Stellenbosch, which is wine country. So they had all these um, cricket grounds in amongst the, the vineyards, which was which was incredible. Um, really something quite special. Um, not playing, but with my job, like I said, we do the on-ground stuff. So uh, BBL games, we get to, to run out with the kids doing them sort of uh, halftime entertainment. Um, we do it at the test match, the New Year's test match as well. So two summers ago, ran out to a full house at the SCG for the Ashes test match. Um, and, you know, the, cr- the crowd get behind the kids and so they're, you know, they're, they're cheering the sixes and uh, the sixes they hit and, and the wicket. So not playing, but you know, that's a, still a, a hell of an experience to, to do that. No, um, yeah. Back home, um, Stirling County, New William Field mm-hmm. was always a favourite, beautiful setting and Oh, we did quite well there. We played a lot of regional stuff there. Um, and you can't beat People's Park, you know. There we go. Wait for it. I've asked so <laughs> many people that question. No one said People's Park. <laughs> yeah, you know, cold, cold bug of a place. You needed about five jumpers on. But, you know, it, it's your home ground. Um, exactly. And, yeah, you Unique. can't beat it. Um, funniest teammate, Elsa. Funniest teammate you've ever played with. You must have a few characters. Oof. Um, well, in the women's squad, I'd probably say Lorna Jack. Um, she is quite a character. <laughs> um, police officer, so she has quite a few funny stories. Um, she just says it as it is. You know, quite like quite like those people that just, you know, no filter whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. Fee, you must have had a few characters back in the day. Yeah, I think in Stonywood, um, probably well. probably Gordon, probably Gordon Gowdy. He um, he he always had amazing banter. He was so quick. If someone said something to him, he he would just straight back with with something pretty comical. Um, women stuff probably um, yeah, oh, my two best mates, uh, Abby, who's who's still playing, and and uh, and Carrie, um, you know, lifetime friends and them. And yeah, we, you know, a lot of people would think our our banter is terrible, but between the three of us, we. We always had a bit of a giggle, so um, yeah, that's that's probably my two from the Scotland. Side. And then probably leading on to the next one, best player played with, and um, obviously we can do in senior stuff and then women's cricket. But I think Carrie is Carrie maybe up there. She was quite a player, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, phenomenal, phenomenal batter. Just so much patience. Um, yeah, he could hit the ball so well. Um, handy bowler as well. Seamer, and then into some some handy little offies in the back end of her career as well. Um, but yeah, probably um, some some club cricket over here. So both with and against. So one of my first games out here was against a, a club called Sydney Tigers, uh, whose opening bowler was Elise Perry, and whose wicketkeeper was Alyssa Healy. Um, <laughs> so this is one of my first games. I'm like, oh my god, welcome to Sydney cricket. Um, <laughs> and I tried to tried to you know uh, stamp my authority and and go after her, which um, I think I scored about five that day. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, and then um, the second season I was there, I, I was pretty smart, and I joined Sydney Tigers, so I got to got to play with uh, with Midge and Pez. So they were on my team, so they were incredible to play with, phenomenal cricketers, um, but also two of the nicest people you'll ever ever meet. Um, for being such superstars, they they're so down to earth. So yeah, that's with and against those. Two yeah, people. no, um, yeah, Elsa, will be you with and against that. That's easy. Made, made the right decision going over there. Yeah, you don't want to face in there. <laughs> Yeah, they're quite they're quite big names. Um, in in Scotland in women's cricket, it's probably actually the hardest, is, especially last season, was when we played Stormers and Eagles regionals, and when both Bryces were in the Eagles. <laughs> um, that would probably be the the hardest <laughs> the hardest match. You know, they both both opened the batting, and then Catherine would open the bowling or something, and mm-hmm. Sarah would be behind the stump. So. A bit, of, a bit of a wall there to try and try and break down. So that, is that maybe your best that you've played with and against them? If you've, um, I don't know. I'm I'm trying to think actually. I think I can't think. I can't really think of many like when it, when I played twos and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, obviously we've played a lot of county county cricket and there's quite a few. There's there's been a couple that have gone on to play like Kia Super League and that kind of thing. Um, but no, na- no names spring to mind. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the last question I've got is one piece of advice, or similar to a previous question, one piece of advice that you would give a 13-year-old self? One thing you wish you knew? 
for going into the cricketing world? Only do tough questions here. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Is um, it very similar to the, the advice earlier? Yeah, I mean, yeah, what I said before is that you, you've absolutely got to enjoy it. Um, you know, don't be pigeonholed into, you know, I think um, a lot of people are like, oh, you're a bowler or you're a batter and, and you don't do anything else. But at that, at 13, um, you can do whatever you like. You can try mm -hmm. off spin, you can try leggies, you, you can open the bat and you can try and nudge it around, you can try and whack it as far as you can. Um, and I think, as, as Elsa said, you know, play play other sports as well. Don't don't just limit yourself. At 13, um, you know, there, there's so much you can do. Um, and you'll you probably enjoy cricket more if you're enjoying other things as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, have have fun with it. Cricket, you meet the most amazing people. You get to go to some of the most amazing places. Um, luckily for me, you know, I've been I've been around the world with cricket, um, and now living in a, in a in a beautiful country, um, working in cricket. So you know, just, yeah, enjoy it, and and the opportunities will come your way. I think that's probably my advice. Yeah, Elsa, and then. Well, it's only only three years ago, so <laughs> I can't <laughs> I can't really I can't really think. Um, <laughs> Uh, probably I, like I, like a lot has changed for me in the last three years you know mm -hmm. three years ago I was just playing like NOSCA reserves um, but I think probably to just I'm, I'm still figuring it out now to be honest but like to just kind of trust in the process and that's I'm kind of giving myself advice on that right now um, but that's just kind of like to not take things you know too serious because too seriously because like I, hopefully I've got quite a long career ahead of me um, and if I put all of this pressure on yourself you know I'm sure a lot of people do it you put a lot of pressure on yourself um, at, even at a young age then you know what's the what's to come when you're actually supposed to be putting pressure on yourself and actually feeling the pressure um, but I think again to just just enjoy it I think that's, that's the main takeaway it's especially just you just got to enjoy it um, so that, that's us I, I always like to end on this um, I'm a bit of an agency for the for the legends fee, so I would call your story with these legends. I'm sure everyone else would as well. Um, if you're ever over, I'm sure, also, as you know, you're more than welcome to the club. And if you make it a September, there'll be a there'll be a special spot in the legends team for you. Because it was a great day yeah. last year. Um, and not, yeah, not sure, not sure the borders will be open by September to get back for them. But um, <laughs> maybe, maybe not this September. <laughs> yeah, um, but no, absolutely. Like yeah, whenever we're back next, um, we'll definitely be up. I'll, I'll take the little fella up with. You know, he'll probably have a bat in his hand by that stage. So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely come back and have a beer. And uh, yeah, we, we, we won't surrender Ilsa to the to the Legends team yet. We we still need someone behind the stumps. So, um, yeah, th thanks very much for coming on, guys. That was another great one. So, um, and thanks everyone for thanks, watching. Mike.